Price. Let's talk about him for a little bit. We're going to talk uh, Major League Baseball here. Yeah, right here. Uh, yeah, especially uh, especially after this. David Price has been a Dodger for less than four months and is yet to throw an official pitch for the organization. But the former Cy Young pitcher has pledged to donate $1,000 to every minor league player in the Dodgers farm system that is not on the 40-man roster for the month of June. Uh, that is 221 players. He is giving these guys $221,000. Now, he did sign a seven-year, $217 million deal on December 2015 uh, with the Boston Red Sox. He was scheduled to earn $32 yes. million this season uh, yes. before the he pandemic. Is, he, is high, he is highly paid. He is yes. highly compensated, and he has had an unbelievable career. Here's my issue. This is what I love about what Price is doing, okay? He's never played for this organization. He's never played for this team ever in his life. He literally was traded there five minutes ago, okay? Yeah. And he is willing to do more than 98% of the owners that are ultra millionaires, billionaires, that pay him his $230 million check, okay? And he says, I know what it's like to be those guys, which he really doesn't because he was a phenom being drafted out of college and spent just enough time in, in the rookie minor ball yeah. before his arbitration. Th- it's just a weird contract thing where no rookies come in at day one because of a control thing during their contracts. Yeah, but he, he started that. basically double uh, A, moved immediately to triple A. But then, in the sing- single year, he was the phenom, but willing to say, you know what? I know these guys don't live good, and I know they're broke, and I know they're struggling. And for us to not take care of them is a shame. I got a thousand bucks. I'm putting on it. Well, here's, I got it. here's the deal. For those of you that don't know that aren't paying attention, the backstory is this: uh, these Major League Baseball franchises, the team owners, etc., uh, basically stopped paying the minor league players. They just they cut them out. It doesn't matter about the contract. There's no season right now. The minor leagues are not going to get to play, um, even if Major League Baseball fires back up. It's not going to happen. It's all driven by fans. Like That's right. we we had Lynn Simon, an attorney from California, on, uh, who is a minor league team owner or a, a co owner. Yeah, and he kind of explained this stuff to us. If you want to go back and find the uh, the podcast, uh, he he kind of explained everything to us about how that is run, and they get you know the the team handles the players, they provide the players, and then everything else with that team is basically run by fans. That's it. Yeah. So if there's no fans, there's no minor league. The people who own and run the Redbirds here in Memphis don't pay the players. They don't draft the players. They don't pick the players. They don't make any coaching decisions for the players at all. Correct. They literally provide a facility for them to play in and market the team to draw fans, and that's how they make their money. They have no say in the players. It's all the 30-team owners that – control the players at all the minor league levels. Right. So David Price willing to step up and say, I'm going to do more than these billionaire owners are willing to do. That's a big deal to me. I just think that speaks to his character. This is a guy that's been, and here's why I like this. This is a guy that's been labeled weird and different. And he's like a video gamer when he's not like, he's not your typical meathead ball player, smart kid, went to Vanderbilt. Um, He, he's, He's been seen as like hard to get along with or not like a good locker room guy. And I think that's because he's super introverted. He's just not oh, yes. He's a different kind of cat. And and it's it's okay for him to be different. He, you know, he's still a good dude. And this this just you get to see a side of him we don't normally get to see. But mainly because he doesn't let it out. Because he just doesn't feel comfortable doing it. Well, to, be, okay. to be fair, there was a story coming out about David Price uh, that came out over the weekend that said he did not want this to be public. He did no, He yeah. did not want them to uh, publicize it, um, and yet it leaked out, and it, it became a bigger thing than it was. And it kind of led some others. Uh, ben jumps in. He said, it's sad how small-town baseball has rotted away painfully slow for the past 60 years. Yeah, small-town baseball... Uh, look, there's 200 and... What, what did they say? 210 minor league franchises across this country? Yeah. I mean, it's it's too many. Mainly, it's just you have a supply and demand problem. There's just college baseball has gotten better and better and better, and that has killed the minor leagues. Yeah, especially because people are, I mean, people have emotional investments 
in yes, that they, they don't they care about the jersey of that college player already because of the school that they represent. Therefore, they have an instant fandom. Um, and most of these are state schools, which have a, a, a basically a, a built in tax free, a tax free exempt to build these facilities to make them really nice. Would you rather live in a college dorm and have guaranteed meals for you every day? Or, or, or play for a pretty league. low price, or live with some host family in the middle of nowhere and play in the shittiest minor league field you could make up. Exactly. Uh, like that's the problem is college based. We need to get rid of so many minor league systems and just basically have a, a, a rookie ball, a double A, a triple A, and then everything else just goes away. Yeah. Then all of those smaller systems will be way better. Way uh, better. Along with David Price. Over the weekend, we learned about the Minnesota Twins are going to start paying more for these minor league players. The Nationals, uh, they have changed course. Big article today on ESPN. Uh, the Nationals changed course, told their minor leaguers on Monday they will receive their full weekly stipends of $400 through June after reliever. And that's, and and that's what the, the Twins, twins are given to, too, is right. uh, $400 weekly. weekly. And I guess that's a standard thing that all the leagues probably collectively bargain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know, but this whatever. Is, and it's not a lot. Hell, it ain't a lot. But no, no. But let, let me shout out the guy that, that got this running. It was uh, reliever Sean Doolittle. Uh, he tweeted that the team's major league players would cover a planned cut in those payments. So the players for the Nats were going yep. to cover this. Yep. And and instead of them covering it, now the Nats are going to do it. Uh, Doolittle wrote on Twitter that Nationals major leaguers held a video uh, conference call after the Athletic reported Sunday that the club would be releasing more than two dozen minor league players and reducing stipends for players in the minors from 400 to $300 per week. Um, you know, that's, it's good. I mean, they're making change here, and it's it's not right that these guys sign these contracts and go in and they are working for this team, and when everything goes away, uh, they just get tossed to the curb. Like, it sucks, but obviously things are are. Everything's fluid right now. It is when, when it you is. when you're playing baseball for a living. It's tough. I mean, it's yes. tough. You're playing a game. You're playing a sport. And until you get to the level that makes money, you don't get to make money. You just have to do it for nothing. And so many other fields and industries are like that. I mean, you you and I are are you're you're super close, and you know the band and the music industry. Those guys are dying right now. Yes. Um, the small town bands that make their living off of touring all these little cities and towns. And, and, and then you've got the same thing in, in another world that we follow and are close to is the stand-up comedian world. Like, those people can't even do, like, Facebook Live, Periscope Live events and ask for donations because you just can't, you just can't do stand-up without an audience. It's exactly. Just not, it's just not possible. No, it's, it's impossible. Um, it, it, so, the yeah, whole I, mean, sucks, it, I mean, minor league baseball is a lot like these other industries, and I feel for them. I'm glad these big boys are stepping up and helping out. And it's it's one of the problems. I wish the owners would do more. There isn't a, you know, a billionaire owner for bands that can that can help pay all the bands. And there isn't a billionaire owner for comedians that can help comedians or whatever. Or whatever your right. art form is that you follow, I'm sure there's more. Those are just two that we know. Once everything um, opens back up, man, I got to tell you, it is going to be overloaded with – uh, just opportunities with things for you to go out and do. I mean, it, it's going to be too much. There's not going to be enough people to go around for all these things. Well, be so many back people up. have been struggling financially. Exactly. Like, how am I going to pay 40. a ten dollar cover charge and buy yeah. three, four beers? Forty million you know, people every, you know, every week or whatever to these things because people are tight right now. The other problem I have with that is bands are a little bit better off for that. So many of the comedy world, if you're a young up and comer, you're not gonna get stage time no. for three, four months. No. Because every big name, big swing and dick comedian is gonna go down to the lower level clubs again just to regrease their wheels for a while before they step up back into the theaters and the stadiums and yeah. these other places. It's gonna take a while. And you're you're just not if you're a guy that wants to do an open mic night and you're really just getting started, you're you're not going to have a place for another three four months. I mean, like, you be, not look, to mention look there's a lot the of, end of the fall. A lot of venues closing down because of this. Like that's uh, that yeah. also takes away. Well, from that opportunity. sucks too. Is how many of these places that were hosting these things are even going to be open? Yeah. 
So the opportunities for the big boys will always be there. I think bands, music's just an easier thing to do. I mean, I I watched a friend do a Facebook Live video last night, yep. and Chris Allen. Yep. It's unbelievable. He does them on Sunday nights. I love them. I love them. To death. Justin Moore, my buddy from uh, Justin from Moore. Yeah, Hill, Justin Moore. Does does, yeah. yeah, Mike, Mike, and uh, uh, Zach and Zach yep. have been doing them. And, you know, you throw them a couple of bucks on their Venmo, and it's really entertaining. They earned it. I'm not just giving them something for nothing. They gave me an hour of entertainment. I like it a lot. Yeah. And and I got something. They have a platform they can do that with. Yeah. Not, not most, the, comedians, most people do not. Comedians. I oh, mean, comedians don't. They don't. I mean, it's just impossible to do that. Um, they, get into the comments real quick. Damian Estrada said, the BS that MLB and these players are arguing about is really stupid and childish. He said, uh, the world has more important things to be worrying about than money, damn it. Uh, it's so frustrating for fans yes. because we're all out here broke as hell, dying, struggling, just trying to make ends meet, and we just want some baseball. That's all we want. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and we I get understand what they're fighting sides. about is important to them, and it's important to their industry, and I fully support collective bargaining, and I understand it. But there's another part of me that says, you know, God damn it, let's work this thing out some other time and just get back to the playing baseball for me. Yeah, I, well, and, and I'll say this. Uh, we don't always agree with Clay Travis, but his no. his idea with how this th- whole thing could be solved very quickly is, okay, you get paid for this season, whatever you want to get paid, and or not whatever you want to get paid, but what whatever will come in, you work through that, and it can either count towards your contract year or it doesn't have to. It's up to the player you decide whether or not you want to get to free agency quicker or you don't. Um, ben jumps in. He said, random thought, but Memphis sure has one of the best minor league stadiums based on pictures I've ever seen. Yes, AutoZone yep. Park is magnificent. Now, AutoZone Park, when it first opened, yes. is incredible. I would tell you, so I years ago when AutoZone Park opened, how old is that stadium? It's been a while for a while now. It's been 15 years. When it first opened, it was, for like 10 years, the best minor league stadium in the country. And I got like a calendar of minor league stadiums. There's one in the Rockies that like has a backdrop of the Rocky mountains. And it was like this purple sunset or whatever. And I was just like, Holy shit. I thought Memphis was nice. Now maybe inside it is a dump, but that view is incredible. I'm sure the view is, is worth whatever the price of admission is. We, we don't have a view like that. We got a really nice building that AutoZone forked over some cash for. Yep. You got that right. Uh, the Brown Yeti said it is possible to do stand up without an audience. I do it all the time. It's called my life. Uh, I still haven't figured out how to make money yet. Yeah, hundred well, percent. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, no, making no, we, money as a comedy comic guy is tough. Yes, real tough. It most certainly is. It takes a lot of years, but hey, you keep rolling. Uh, Damian yeah, said, "I hope baseball doesn't come back. It's long and hell, or long as hell, and a little boring." Hey, oh. I, I I love baseball. I've I've loved baseball since I was a kid. Uh, I don't watch every game. But I would like to have it on in the background. That's the perfect game for dads. You just have it on. You can check the score, see what's going on, see if it's something important that you need to watch, and then you go from there. So uh, you've only got a taking couple more. Your, uh, taking your kid. Well, I can, I can go a little bit earlier. I, I got a text message saying it's okay to push back a little. Okay. Um, taking your kids to games. Yes. NBA games are probably pretty fun. Basketball is a good sport to do. Not necessarily NBA. Basketball as a sport. Football. That, I, m- maybe it's because I have girls. That is going to be long, long, even if they were boys, many, many, many a years before I would take them to a football game. 100%. Because when I'm at a game, I'm paying attention to what's going on in the game, and I don't want to be daddy. But baseball is, in my opinion, the best sport for it because of its well, slow for, pace. For families, yes. Yes, it is the best sport to take your kids to. Getting the hot dog, getting some nachos, walking around, letting them play the little carnival games. You're not missing much. No, and it's it's fantastic. I mean, it, you can actually yeah. it is, sit down it and pay is my attention. favorite. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the, the only sport I'm probably going to take my kids to for a while because I'm not know. spending that kind of money getting them into basketball games or football games. No, and I don't want them there. I don't want to be a dad right now. I want to pay attention to what's going on on the court or the field. Yes. Uh, the Brown Yeti said, I prefer college baseball a little more, but I'll take any baseball right now. Yeah, and then I'll take Joseph, any baseball right now. Joseph Gomez said, is the 12-inning doubleheader – Six innings each, still an uh, option on the table. I don't think well, so. Well, I thought they were talking seven innings. I think, Yeah, they were talking seven innings. Uh, I heard seven in some doubleheaders, but I, I haven't know. heard about the 12-inning doubleheaders. I, don't, I, I heard about it for a little while back in, like, early April. I don't think that's still on the table. I'll take any plan they got. Yeah, I really just whatever. Will. Just get Anything baseball back on TV, man. Just come on. I, I need something yeah. during my work day to, to pay attention to that's live. 
Like, I swear to God, I've watched so many old games. Uh, and it's mostly, it's, it's all football right now. But it, I just want to get back to, listen, I just need a reason to get to get out of here and to get back to Fenway. There you go. I can believe it. All right, let's, uh, let's close up today's show. Let's, uh, let's wrap it up 